President Cyril Ramaphosa has praised Nosivuya Mapisa Ngakula for resigning as Speaker of the National Assembly and Member of Parliament over allegations of corruption. He also highlighted that the decision wasn't an admission of guilt, but a commitment to safeguard Parliament's integrity. Now to help us unpack President Ramaphosa's statement, we're now joined by political analyst Professor Peggy Ngomezulu. Professor Ngomezulu, thank you so much for joining us this evening on News at Prime. The ANC woes aren't getting any better, as we have seen, as they are heading to the polls, we're seeing that there's much more bickering going on already. What do you make of President Sir Ramaphosa commending the former speaker? Um, while we do know that our constitution says you're innocent until proven guilty, do you, however, think that the president should have had a more non-tolerant language kind of approach to the matter, stronger language? Uh, thank you very much for having me, my sister, and good evening to your viewers. <laughs> Ideally, yes, the president uh, should have uh, uh, at least uh, used a tougher tone, but I don't think that uh, he is qualified to do that, given the fact that uh, <clears throat> he himself found himself in the same predicament. And in fact, he did exactly the same thing that uh, the former speaker has done, which was to resign. Mm -hmm. But uh, unfortunately for him, uh, that uh, resignation did not come to fruition because uh, his colleagues in the National Assembly protected him and therefore he is still the president. So under normal circumstances, uh, for someone who uh, assumed this position, uh, uh, telling the nation and the world that uh, he was going to be anti-corruption, uh, he was going to make sure that everything is done according to book, then of course a tough tone would have worked. But in this case, uh, it was almost impossible for him to do that. You would also recall that Mapisa uh, Ngagula uh, is not the first one to do this. Uh, just recently, during COVID-19, Dr. Zuelim Kiz, who was the Minister of Health, did exactly the same thing. When he was implicated in the wrongdoing regarding PPEs, he voluntarily resigned even before he was held before the Integrity Committee and before he was even formally charged. And to date, I don't remember any formal charge against him, but he resigned. So in this case, and I think the three of them are in fact in the same situation. Dr. Zulim Kese, the president, and then now Mapisa Ngagula. The difference is that the first and the third are no longer in parliament, and the president is still the president of the country. So I guess it's a case of you can't throw stones when you're living in a glass house. But however, Prof, don't you agree that this is also a missed opportunity, it being an election year, especially with the ANC facing the kind of contestation that they're facing with this election as well, that this was an opportunity for them to show a no-nonsense approach when it comes to corruption, just as we head to the polls. Uh, ordinarily, we are right, my sister. That is what should have happened, more especially because... Uh, the party has embarked on the renewal process or the renewal project, however I want to call it. So if that were to be true, then it would mean that uh, any wrongdoing, uh, uh, real or imagined, uh, should be dealt with accordingly. But uh, it's very difficult to do that. You would recall that just recently, uh, Mapisa Ngagula also uh, insinuated that uh, one of her colleagues, the chief whip of the ANC, uh, uh, Honorable Pema Jodina might have, been, might have had something to do uh, with what she finds herself in. Although, of course, she, she, she is not the one who orchestrated the whole thing, but then uh, Mapisa Ngawula feels that uh, uh, the chief whip of the ANC threw her under the bus. Whether that is true or not, we are going to wait until the 4th of June when the, uh, the, the case is going to be heard. But your point still remains that uh, under normal circumstances, given the fact that it is an election year, and given the fact that the ANC would want to win back uh, voters who are now despondent, then, of course, this would have been an opportunity. But because of the dynamics I've just outlined, uh, even the president cannot do it. Because of the factional politics, also, it's not easy to do it. And because of this um, um, uh, statement that uh, there might be some members of the party uh, who might have uh, thrown Mapisa uh, Ngawula under the bus, that means that everyone uh, who deals with this, with this matter will have to tread carefully because we don't want to cause more uh, trouble than the parties already facing at the moment. And speaking of that as well, that leads me to my next question of how much support do you think Mapisa Ngakula is getting from the ANC? Because some NEC members have come out in support of her publicly. And of course, as you've mentioned, she also believes that there is a witch hunt and she's pointing the finger at the ANC chief whip. 
Pemi Majodina. Again, in an election year, we've got these two prominent ANC leaders who are having what seems to be a public spat. Um, yesterday on the show, we spoke to the former Women's League uh, president, Batabi Lamini, who had made mention that these two actually haven't had a chance to be in the same room and speak to each other. But this matter has already gone to the two structures that we know, the um, National Working Committee of the ANC as well as the Integrity Commission of the ANC. But isn't this also a bit of a distraction while they are facing these internal woes instead of been focusing on campaigning and restoring their image? Uh, you are right, my sister. <clears throat> Anything that uh, disrupts uh, the campaigns is, is not welcome because all political parties now have their eyes focused on the 29th of May. So it means that whatever resources we have, uh, we, be it human capital or financial resources, we have to put those together to, um, uh, to the campaign trail to make sure that uh, uh, you, you at least win those who are in the fence. Because truth be told, there are people who have already made up their mind long mm -hmm. before the manifestos were read, long before any party came out openly saying that we are, we are going to contest this election, long before the IEC could confirm, uh, which is what we are expecting on the 10th, that this party will be contesting, and then these are the leaders who are going to be uh, there, or these are the uh, potential members of the party. People have already made up their mind, but we also have people are on the fence. So at this time, uh, the campaigns are meant to uh, win those ones. Those who already decided to don't have to worry about those, they, they already know how they are going to vote. So in this case then, I think the ANC is being disturbed or disrupted by these kinds of developments because it means now th these factions that we've been complaining about are going to be widened, given the fact that uh, there are already people who are on the side of the former national speaker, uh, that is Mapisa Ngagula, whereas others are saying, no, let the law take its course. Uh, there's been mixed uh, messages or uh, messaging that has been happening uh, for quite some time. Uh, I remember at some point I was saying that uh, uh, if you, you, you feel that a uh, former president, Tabon Peggy, was wrong and therefore deserved to be an um, act from the, from the ANC and from his, I mean from his position as the president, and you felt that the former president, Zuma, uh, was also deserved to be asked from the ANC, the question then is on which grounds would you then go to the National Assembly and then protect the current president? So those are the kinds of things that are coming back to haunt the ANC, which boils down to factional politics. So in other words, you, you treat uh, people differently based on who they are and not what they've done. And that does not work well for any political party, the ANC included. And I guess, Prof, it is also quite simple to be able to see where these factions lie, because as you've mentioned, there are those who have come out publicly. Um, I think it was this week that ANC NEC member Andile uh, Lungisa tweeted, and I quote, that Mama Nosiviwe, please stay strong. This moment shall pass. You will overcome. So that language is not just saying that um, I don't believe these allegations, but this will move along swiftly, regardless of whatever transpires within the law. Uh, you are absolutely right. There are times, my sister, when you can win a legal battle but then lose a political battle. And there are times when the opposite is true. Uh, so in this case, it might well be the case that there have been a number of uh, uh, leaders who have won a legal battle, but then their, their political image has been tainted. Uh, in this case, you have uh, uh, the former national speaker, uh, uh, Mapisa Ngagula, who has voluntarily resigned before she was uh, hit by a vote of no confidence as initiated by the DA and other political parties. In that way, she saved, uh, uh, she, she saved the ANC because then it would have been an embarrassment for a sitting speaker uh, to be uh, asked through a vote of no confidence. But then also she protected herself and she protected uh, her benefits because if you resign, you still retain your benefits. But if you are asked, then of course everything just falls, falls by the wayside. But the reality, my sister, here is that uh, the fact that you hear people talking uh, in, in little corners saying that what they can see what is happening tells you that uh, uh, there is more to this than we want to believe. In other words, as much as it might well be the case uh, that uh, uh, something untoward happened when the, 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 national speaker, the former national speaker was the Minister of Defense, then the reality is that there is also something else that could have uh, come into the picture, which is why then people are, are looking at this from a political angle as opposed to the legal angle. It goes back to the point I made earlier on that uh, you always have to juxtapose these two. You have the political angle on the one hand, 
and then of course you're difficult angle on the, on the other hand. At times you win one and not the other, and if you're lucky, you win both, which is very rare. Well, it certainly is one of those developments that we'll be keeping a close eye on. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. That was political analyst Professor Peggy Ngomizulu.